On Amchitka Island, the wind is rarely calm. The Alaskan island is so remote that finding it on a map can be difficult. It's near the end of the Aleutian Island chain, situated between the Pacific Ocean and the Bering Sea, and it's so far west that it's actually in the Eastern Hemisphere, almost as close to Siberia as to the continental United States. Clouds and fog are constant companions to the lichen, ferns, and tundra grasses that carpet the land. Amchitka Island is a habitat for a wide variety of species that Aleuts, the Alaska native inhabitants of the Aleutian Islands, catch and gather to eat. Although Amchitka is currently uninhabited, the Aleuts once lived on the island. They collected gull eggs and caught halibut and octopus from the ocean and Dolly Varden from the numerous lakes on the island. Before the Aleuts abandoned their dwellings on the island in the late 18th century, they lived there intermittently for 4,000 years. To the casual observer, the environment at Amchitka today seems unchanging. However, a closer look shows otherwise. The Atomic Energy Commission, a predecessor to the Department of Energy and the Department of Defense, staged three underground nuclear tests on Amchitka. During the first test, named Longshot, in 1965, a nuclear device was detonated as part of a nuclear detection experiment. The second test, Milro, which took place four years later, was a weapons calibration test. The third test, called Kanakin, was conducted in 1971 and remains the largest underground nuclear detonation in U.S. history. The explosive force of the test was as powerful as 250 Hiroshima bombs. These three tests, all conducted underground, left radionuclides in the blast cavities of the detonations. If dangerous levels of radionuclides left over from the nuclear tests were to enter the marine food chain, they could affect the environment and people's health. To assess that possibility, the Department of Energy's Office of Legacy Management performs monitoring on and around Amchitka Island in accordance with Amchitka's long-term surveillance and maintenance plan. Since the nuclear tests were conducted on Amchitka, the Aleuts and other residents of Alaska have been concerned about radiation leaking from the site. We're able to get real data and establish a baseline so we can tell if radionuclide levels are going up or down, if there's any possible leakage from the three cavities on this island, and if there are any radionuclides building up in subsistence and commercial foods that could impact people's health. Through various federal and independent studies, the Atomic Energy Commission and the Department of Energy have been collecting data on Amchitka's environment since even before the Longshot test. Studies have been conducted to assess whether radionuclides on Amchitka Island and in the water that surrounds it put people or wildlife at risk, and whether any radionuclides could be associated with the three nuclear tests. In 2004, the Consortium for Risk Evaluation with Stakeholders Participation, or CRESP, performed the most recent of these studies. CRESP's study found that the levels of radionuclides in biota are far too low to impact organisms or ecosystems. Put another way, the three on-island nuclear tests have not affected Amchitka's environment. So far there haven't, even, even the uh previous efforts that haven't been able to get a lot of detections on the sampling that they've done haven't shown levels of concern in subsistence and commercial foods sampled out here. In June 2011, the Office of Legacy Management chartered a research vessel, the Ocean Pioneer, to transport a team of scientists to Amchitka to begin the monitoring that would take place on land. After the on-island work was completed, a second vessel, the Norseman, was chartered for divers to collect samples from the ocean. Both vessels were the scientific team's temporary homes. For the 2011 monitoring program, nearby Adak Island was used as the reference area for natural radionuclide levels. The same types of samples were collected on both Adak and Amchitka Islands, and their radionuclide levels are being tested the same way and compared. During the six-week trip, the team had two tasks. The first was to collect samples of water, 
plants, gall eggs, and fish and other marine specimens for laboratory testing. Results from this sampling will indicate whether people are at greater risk when consuming foods from around Amchitka. The team's second task was to survey the lichen that grow on the island and to inspect the engineered disposal cells that hold contaminated soil material left over from the construction of the emplacement holes. The Department of Energy periodically monitors the physical condition of these engineered disposal cells to ensure the contaminants they contain do not harm the people or the environment. I work for the Aleutian Pribloff Islands Association. We're the regional native nonprofit, a consortium of the 13 Aleut tribes. And we're acting as agents for the government to government relationship that we have with the Department of Energy to address the Mchika issues. The on island work was made easier by the series of roads that remains on the island remnants from when the U.S. military occupied Amchitka in World War II and from the Cold War nuclear tests. However, Amchitka's nearly constant wind and rain had damaged some of the roads, so a backhoe was brought along to repair them. Collecting marine samples posed its own challenges. The cold water marine dive team and the crew of the Norsemen had to coordinate their work in harsh weather and ever-changing sea conditions. The dive team logged over 200 dives in 20 days, an impressive feat. Actually, we had uh, nearly 158 hours of bottom time. If you look at man hours of bottom time, it's uh, pretty impressive. Uh, that's, a lot, that's a lot of time spent uh, shuffling around the bottom of the ocean for these samples. And so uh, it all paid off. And so we, we accomplished most of our goals. I think uh, most of the samples were obtained. And we may be short on a, in a, a couple of sites on some of the, uh, the target species, but for the most part, we were, I think we were pretty productive. The divers collected dragon kelp, gumboot chitin, brown mussel, sea urchin, rockfish, Irish lords and octopus. Once back on the Norseman, the sample preparation began. Each sample was examined, weighed, double-bagged, and tagged to maintain a secure chain of custody. The scientists who worked on land collected lichen, gall eggs, and rockweed by hand, and also collected lake water. Some fished for Dolly Varden and three-spined stickleback from the shoreline. Long-term, our hopes are to be able to trend the uh, concentrations of radioisotopes that uh, might possibly be derived from the detonations out on uh, Amchitka and to understand if those radioisotopes are discharging into the marine environment. The success of the mission can be credited to the effort of the Ocean Pioneer crew, the Norseman crew, and the legacy management scientific teams, which included men and women from the Department of Energy, the University of Alaska Fairbanks, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service, the Alaska Department of Conservation, and the Aleutian Pribilof Island Association. The Tritium Laboratory at the University of Miami's Rosensteel School of Marine and Atmospheric Science is performing enriched tritium analyses on seawater samples. The Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory is performing the radionuclide analyses on all of the biological samples, and the University of Alaska Fairbanks is performing selected analyses on a subset of the samples. Once the laboratory data are finalized, they will be compared to the previously collected CRESP data and to regional and worldwide radionuclide levels to assess subsistence and commercial food safety.